Telecom operators lose over 6 million subscribers in six months amid fears that even more could be lost. Newly sworn in ministers talk tough as they explain how they will implement Tinubu's agenda. And along with those topics, we are also going to look at the press on uh, the segment we call Up the Press as we look at the headlines that made it to the front pages of our national dailies. A very good morning to you and thanks for joining us. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. This is a Wednesday, so we're hoping that you have had a suspect a sus successful Monday, successful Tuesday, now it's Wednesday and we hope that Thursday, Friday will also be good. But that will depend on how you set the tone from today. It's a Wednesday frenzy and we're hoping that you're going to have a wonderful time with us. Lots and lots of things are happening in our country and we like to bring you all the time uh, what has made, um, made it to the uh, the front burner, as it, as it were, in the social media and all that, what we call top trending. One of them is that Nigerian government has repatriated 161 nationals in Libya detention facilities to Lagos. One of the persons who uh, dropped a comment on that said, what are Nigerians doing in Libya that they will even go into detention and all that? And a lot of people expressed worry that people from the giant of Africa will be so culpable in another land, any land at all. And then now we're talking about Libya. 161 is quite a number, but you know, they were full of praises for uh, the country for doing the needful. So they said 161 Nigerians whose releases were secured from detention facilities in Libya over various immigration offenses have been repatriated by the federal government. And this was made known by Yakub Musa, the charge their affairs and terror, I, I don't even know how that French word is called, of the Nigerian mission in Libya. It's like the ambassador to Libya on Monday in Abuja, noting that the Nigerian government, uh, through its mission in Libya, secured the release of the detained Nigerians to enable them uh, return home and rebuild their lives. He explained that the evacuees were expected to arrive at Murtala Mohammed International Airport, Lagos, on Monday night, adding that the evacuees were also sensitized on the dangers of irregular migration and warned against embarking on such perilous journeys again and warned others to get home to avoid irregular migrations. And the 161 evacuees, including 87 males and 68 females, five children and one infant, departed uh, Mitiga International Airport, Tripoli, aboard chartered flight number UZ0189 on Monday evening and arrived at the Murtala Mohammed International Airport, Lagos, the same day, that is Monday night. Almost 6,000 stranded Nigerians have been repatriated under the International Organization for Migration, IOM, and the federal government's uh, voluntary humanitarian repatriation, VHR, exercise in 2023. Now, uh, the, the, the words used uh, suggest that these are the people that have been released. And the question is, are there others that have not been released? Um, it was not clear whether that was a ca the case, that there may be some people in detention uh, that have not been released already. But these ones have been released, and 161, that is quite a number. But while we, we tend to blame the people for doing uh, what they did illegally, because you, if you have problems with immigration, that means that uh, your papers are not complete, the procedure that you're supposed to pass, they laid down rules, the laws that you're supposed to uh, keep, you didn't keep them, and then they were detained in Libya. The question also we will have to ask ourselves is that why did these people need to cut corners? Yes, it's a crime not to do uh, what you're supposed to do and enter someone else's country. Uh, maybe you don't have a visa. Maybe you don't have all the relevant papers that you're supposed to have. Maybe you're supposed to report to a certain place and you didn't do that. Whatever the case was, it was good enough for the people or bad enough for Libyan authorities to detain these people. So I asked myself, and some other people are also asking, why is it that some people needed to do what they did? 
because w when you see somebody doing something like that, maybe he's also running away from somewhere. And in the case of emergency, I'm quoting that, um, maybe some of the things could not be done. So we ask ourselves, how easy is it to get visa in Nigeria? How easy is it to get the papers that you need to get before you get out? Uh, what was the situation before these people sort of like ran away? Because some of them use this country as a place where they can, you know, uh, get transportation, as it were, to their country of uh, uh, preference. Maybe some of them are going to the UK, some of them are going to other countries, and then they want to go to Libya first. Some of them may just be running from home and saying anywhere better, anywhere is better than home. Whatever the case may be, we should look into uh, these reasons why people do what they do. Now, there was this case about um, uh, people who were evacuated from Sudan, and one of the complaints was that even, and some of us from Ukraine anyway, uh, when the war broke out last year in February. Now, one of the things that came out of that is the fact that Nigerian nationals sometimes go into a country and they fail to register with their uh, with the Nigerian High Commission in that country. Uh, so the Nigerian High Commission in that country does not even know about its citizens that are living in a particular country. So when it comes to documentation, when it comes to an emergency where people from Nigeria need to be removed from that country, there, are, there is no indication that these people are living in that country because nobody knows them. No, no Nigerian authority, that is, knows them as being in that country. Just, they just sneak into that country and don't ha want to have anything to do with Nigeria. This is really worrisome. So while you tend to blame the people, you also ask yourself, if your child doesn't do something, you ask yourself, is it that I'm not giving that child the opportunity to do uh, what he's supposed to do? Am I, am I not making the child to be confident enough in me to tell me what the problems are, the challenges are, and all that? So we as a country will also ask, us, uh, why do our citizens, why will our citizens go into another country and just, you know, wash their hands and dust their feet and they don't want to have anything to do with our country, they don't want to even identify until there is a problem. That's when you get to see some people saying that they are Nigerians, but in the meantime, they didn't want uh, Nigeria to even know that they have left the country, uh, let alone uh, bring or come back to the country and all that. So there are fundamental problems that we need to address. Our people do not even need to go out to any other country. How many Americans run to Nigeria for greener pastures? How many uh, Britons run to Nigeria for greener pastures? How many f French men and women run to Nigeria for greener pastures? If they come, they are coming for tourism. Why? Because the conditions in their country are better than the country that they should have run to. I know people come from other countries to also uh, in, uh, become indigents of Nigeria for whatever reason. But if you, if you check everything is by percentage, if the percentage is so low, uh, those who are coming in, and the one that uh, people who are going out of our country is so high, then you tend to just generalize and say that people don't come to Nigeria uh, to, to become Nigerians, but people move from Nigeria and go out to become citizens of other countries. Um, you know, it has become something that every parent, even those of us that do not even uh, dream of going out of this Nigeria to become citizens, maybe in UK or the, or the US or something, uh, we're thinking seriously about the fact that if I, I have to endure this, should my children also endure this? So why should all of us be thinking about how to jackba or uh, facilitate the jack barring of our children, if I may say that. Well, we also have this story that the police uh, has charged uh, former Petroleum Minister Alison Madweke with bribery. That is the UK police. Now, Alison Madweke, if you remember uh, her, she served as Petroleum Minister from 2010 to 2015 under former President Goodluck Jonathan and later acted as President of the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, OPEC, in 2014 to 2015. She has been charged now by the UK police with abuse of power in Nigeria and accused of accepting financial rewards for awarding multi-million pound contracts. The head of the National Crime Agency's uh, International Corruption Unit, Andy Kelly, has described the charges as a milestone in what has been a thorough and complex international investigation. 
Now, Alison Madweke, Madweke was arrested in London in October 2015, if you recall. And a few months after leaving office, and, uh, she has also been uh, the subject of investigation in Nigeria and the United States. The NCA said she was currently living in St. John's Wood, an upmarket area of West London, and uh, would appear at Westminster Magistrates Court on October 2. It said Alison Madueke was accused of benefiting from at least £100,000, that is $127,000 in cash, chauffeur-driven cars, flights on private uh, jets, luxury holidays for her family, and the use of multiple London properties. Now, uh, we did go show ourselves. That's, <laughs> that's what we would say in Nigeria. And the charges against her also detail financial rewards, including furniture, renovation work, and staff for the properties, payment of private school fees, and gifts from high-end designer shops, such as Carter Jewelry and Louis Vuitton, Louis Vuitton uh, Goods, the NCA said. It added that assets worth millions of pounds relating to the alleged offenses had been frozen and that it had provided evidence to the U.S. Department of Justice that enabled them to recover assets worth $53 million linked to her. Nigerian courts have also ordered the seizure of tens of millions of dollars worth of assets, including properties, cars, large quantities of jewelry, and a gold iPhone in a series of ruling in recent years. News of the British charges comes a month after a London court ordered the confiscation of $130 million from a former Nigerian oil state governor, uh, James Ibori, in an unrelated but equally high-profile case. With its highly developed legal and financial industries and uh, lucrative property market, Britain is a global money laundering hub and the NCA's anti-corruption unit is part of the authority's effort to stem the tide of dirty money. I do hope that if they have discovered that this money is dirty, they will return it to where it is supposed to be. So if it is stolen from Nigeria, let it be returned to Nigeria. When this money was being siphoned, why were questions not asked until now? And uh, like in the case of James Ibori, he was jailed in uh, in faraway lands, but back home he was still a godfather. In fact, right now he's still a godfather, a godfather of politics in the state from which he came. He comes, and we we ask ourselves, what is really happening? Is our justice system so broken that we can't get things done the way they should be done? Uh, is is our is our law enforcement agencies or are our law enforcement agencies so broke? Uh, that they cannot do the needful and prevent, not just be reactionary, can't, can't they prevent this kind of things from happening? Multi-million dollar um, fraud, multi-million pounds fraud, uh, siphoning of money uh, from one area to the other. And also, I ask myself, the Western countries that say they are very upright, how come they tolerate all these things happening in their country? Now, if this has happened and Dizani is jailed, for instance, uh, where will all these assets that she's told to their country go to? Will they return everything to Nigeria? Uh, or uh, were they just waiting for the things to uh, increase in value uh, before they do what they are supposed to do or they were supposed to do a long time ago? I, I don't have information for this. I'm not that... Um, uh, knowledgeable in law matters and international relations and all that. But I think if anybody, like they say, um, everybody who wants to say anything should b make sure that he or she is clean enough, their hands are clean. He who comes to equity must come with clean, clean hands or something like that that is being said. So the Western countries need to do better. Our own countries here in Africa need to do better. Everybody that knows that you are responsible for your life should do better by exposing the people who need to be exposed. Sometimes these are the same people uh, that give chieftaincy titles to other people that we know as embezzlers, we know as uh, uh, kleptomaniacs, we know as whatever name you want to use to qualify them. And then when you decide to be an upright man, uh, they tend to look at you as someone who is not smart. So if our country will be better, we all need to be better. Name and shame those who need to be named and shamed. 
and name and uh, praise those who need to be named and praised. This is our country, and only us can make it better. We'll take a short break, and when we return, we'll go to the papers to see what made the headlines. Stay with us.